An aircraft made from a newcomer meant to steal all of the market, and in some ways it did, others not so much. The market was evolving and the aircraft were the wall with it. This is the story of the Saab 340 and a famous little regional aircraft. Full history, operators and legacy. Let's go! In the 1970s, regional air travel was booming. Finally, you didn't need to operate big, noisy Boeing 707s on one hour routes. No, no, you could take a much lighter aircraft. Therefore, it was really catching on with the rivals like the Fokker F-28 and others. Saab, a Swedish aircraft manufacturer known for its awesome military aircraft, wanted to enter the civilian market and therefore in the late 70s the decision was made to start developing a new regional airliner. After finding a partner, the American aircraft manufacturer Fairchild, because this was way too large for Saab to handle themselves, development was started on a clean sheet design. The objective was to produce an aircraft to serve short haul routes with around 30 to 40 passengers while keeping down fuel costs and operation costs. Remember, this was just after the 1970s oil crisis, so airlines were really taking fuel use into account. Also, because of this, it was decided to make use of turboprop engines, which were slower but much more economical than turbofan engines. The development took around 5 years, and in 1983 it was ready. So ready, in fact, that on the 25th of January 1983, the Saab Fairchild 340 took its very first flight. Now that they both wanted to enter the market, Fairchild and Saab joined forces. Saab would develop and build some parts, while wings, fuselage and others were produced in Fairchild's factories in the USA. The first variant was the Saab Fairchild 340A, and after sales started, it took off, becoming the world's most sold regional aircraft at the time. And by 1984, orders were being delivered, with Swiss airline Crossair being the very first airline to fly the aircraft, with Pope John Paul II being the very first passenger. However, it all came to a standstill when Fairchild exited the partnership after only 40 units. Talk about a betrayal. Anyway, the Fairchild name was dropped and Saab continued on selling, building and flying the aircraft. In 1989, an approved version of the Saab, the Saab 340B, the second generation introduced more powerful engines and a wider horizontal stabilizer. They also featured active noise control system, and over 200 units of these were made. Pretty good. Then following that, in 1994, the final and third version was introduced, the Saab 340B Plus. Very creative naming. Though, this variant sales were overshadowed by the Saab 2000 model, which was a larger, more capable sibling of the 340 that was being put into service at the time. The latest 340 variant ended up in production in 1999, with 459 Saab 340s being built over the course of 10 years. All of these aircraft went to many different airlines. Over 40 airlines have flown the aircraft, and it's simply awesome. So all in all, Three variants were produced over the course of 10 years, with 459 being built. Let's talk about some dimensions. With a crew of two pilots, it offers a comfortable capacity of up to 34 passengers and a maximum payload of 7,500 pounds, 3,400 kilograms. The aircraft boasts dimensions of 19 meters in length, 21 meters in wingspan and 6 meters in height, with a wingspanning of 41 square meters and an average operational empty weight of 8,618 kilograms. It maintains a maximum takeoff weight of 13,150 kilograms, which was increased to 30,000 pounds for the 340B variant. Powering the two General Electric CT9B turboprop engines, generating 1,390 kilowatts, 1,870 shaft horsepower each. The Saab 340 achieves a cruise speed of 524 kilometers per hour and a range of 1,350 kilometers on long-range cruises with 34 passengers and baggage. 
Its service ceiling reaches 7,620 meters, and it requires takeoff distance of 1,285 meters. Although it has been out of production since 1999, there are still over 20 passenger airlines flying the aircraft. As of December 2021, Rex Regional Express is the largest operator, flying about half of the total Saab 340 fleet. They fly across domestic and regional routes in Australia. Various other airlines from Scotland to the Pacific still fly the aircraft for passenger flights. When Saab decided to launch a larger aircraft for the same market, they expected it to solve all of the Saab 340's problems, but it didn't. Not nearly as many Saab 2000s have been produced as the Saab 340. It has a longer body than the Saab 340, can carry more passengers and has a faster cruising speed. But again, it was much less successful than the Saab 340. And as of March 2022, only 10 Saab 2000 aircraft are still in service, while over 250 Saab 340s are still in service. This was predictable as Saab simply can't compete with the newer Embraer and CRJ series of aircraft, especially the same sized Embraer 170. So in conclusion, the Saab 340, a light, reliable and rugged little airliner. It has served in many places, but at last, as all others, newer, more capable aircraft took its place and they're not being built anymore. However, they still stand as strong with over 200 still in service. So your chances of flying one are not gone. That was all I had for you today. If you liked it, remember to like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.